condition what happens IgA baby person develop first baby develop first viral infection respiratory tract and you know mucosal antibodies are IgA A. IgA is the antiseptic paint on the mucosa so when he developed the respiratory viral infection he made a lot of IgA but in this baby IgA clearance mechanism was not good so IgA which was spilled into blood made aggregate and could not be cleared normally it is the duty of the liver to remove uh, liver it is duty of the liver to remove the IgA aggregates from the blood so these aggregated IgA deposited in multiple areas when they developed under the skin complement stimulated inflammatory lesions, rashes when these deposits develop in the GID mucosa abdominal cramps when these deposits were there in producing inflammatory lesion in glomeruli what was there? protein urea is that right? when these deposits are caught into lymph node generalized lymphadenopathy it's so easy to explain such deposits love to bind with pleural membrane and pericardial membrane so sometimes they may develop pleuritic pain and pericardial pain is that right? and in few days liver will eventually remove these IgA aggregates and baby will be okay and after a few months he again develop the respiratory tract infection and again that is followed by all these things is that right? so he knows all in purpura this is another dysfunction that IgA aggregates were not removed from the blood am I clear? right? now let's talk about how alternate pathway was activated we were discussing it last time and this is suppose uh, endotoxins or IgA aggregates right now who will bind here directly yes do you think you need IgG IgM no in this case what will bind here C3B will be there and what will be left away C3A is that right now C3A goes away C3B is deposited, deposited here and with deposited C3B another protein comes and binds what is that protein yeah that is called very simple name B factor B factor and as soon as B factor touches it breaks down to B A factor and B B factor so what remains there with this B B factor what is the loss here B A factor these two together these two together act as C3 convertase so they activate one more molecule of C3 so what is there yeah another C3 B deposited C3 B deposited and what has gone away C3 A is that right now all three together act as C act as C5 convertase and they activate C5 and what is lost C5 A what is left behind C5 B and what will bind with it 6 7 8 and 9 and they will make perforations and kill the bacteria am I clear so this was your classic pathway this is your alternate path we know the pathways now we have to see how they are regulated this is the real topic which I wanted to discuss how they are regulated the very first factor for regulation of specially classic pathway is the presence of antibody presence of antibodies if antibodies are not there can classic be activated no, no. if antibodies level is high in a particular area complement production and activation will be high. more and if antibody level in some tissue is less less, less. so one of the very important factor for classic pathway activation is that IgG, IgM should be there or any one of these two should be there secondly not only IgG, IgM should be there but it should be complexing with the antigen because normally IgG, IgM is circulating in the blood without activating the complement thank god but as soon as and these antibodies are like dogs they keep on moving but as soon as they get the bone they start moving the tail and tail activates the complement system so these antibodies IgG and IgM are circulating in the blood but if antibodies are not having the antigens they are unable to activate the complement thank god they don't activate but as soon as these circulating antibodies reach to a point where there are antigens as soon as antibody this is an antibody without antigen this is the an antibody complex with antigen as soon as antibody complex with the antigen IgG IgM this portion become active this is the part which can activate the complement 
So what does it mean? Another factor which controls the activation of classic pathway is the presence of antigen-antibody complex, not just antibody. Is that right? These two very logical things which are required for activation of the classic pathway. Then there is a very special regulator. What is that regulator? As I told you that in classic pathway, this is an antigen. Here is suppose antibody, right? And this antibody is complexing with the antigen. And I told you in the previous lecture that as soon as antibody reacts with the antigens, it exposes certain areas. These are the areas. And these areas are able to react with C1. Is that right? Let's suppose C1 bind here. What is this binding here? C1. And what is here binding? C1. Am I clear? Now, as soon as C1 start binding here, it activates is proteolytic activity. What is this? Proteolytic activity. Is that right? But there is an enzyme present in the blood and this enzyme is called, yes, this is not happy with this activity business. This is called, yes, C1 esterase inhibitor. What is this? This black enzymes or black proteins inhibit the activity of C1. So they are positively regulating system or negatively regulating? Negative. Negative regulators. So all of us, thank God, have sufficient amount of C1 inhibitors or C1 esterase inhibitor so that there should not be inappropriate activation of classic pathway. Is that right? To really activate the classic pathway, there should be so much C1 activated that C1 inhibitor should be overwhelmed. Let me repeat it. If really there is a lot of antigen and there is severe stimulation and the antibodies, then antibodies will produce so much C1 that they will overwhelm their or overcome their inhibitor. Only then pathway can move forward. So it means there should be a lot of C1 so that first it inhibit the, neutralize the C1 inhibitor. Only then it can activate the pathway. So we can say that C1 esterase inhibitor, C1 esterase inhibitor is the negative regulator of C1. Now you may be thinking, why Dr. Najib is so concerned about this, that your students should know that there is inhibitor? Because their disease is related with that. There's a disease, you will tell me the name of the disease, I tell you the condition. In that disease, there's inherited defect, genetic defect. And person does not make C1 inhibitor in sufficient amount. So person is deficient in C1 inhibitor. So such person who has, who has deficiency of C1 inhibitor activity, classic pathway will be underactivated or overactivated? Overactivated, very natural. It's like a car without brakes. When classic pathway is overactivated, then C2A, 4A, 3A, 5A, all these are produced more or less? More. Yes, they are produced more. And if all these products are produced more, you know these products can activate the mast cells. Mast cells, mast cells have receptor for C3A, they have receptors for C5A, mast cells are sensitive to even C4A. And when these things touch the mast cell, mast cells start producing histamine and other products. So it means the person who has inherited deficiency of C1 esterase, he has unfortunately producing overproduction of the product of classic pathway, which may stimulate the mast cells, especially under the skin and under the mucosa. Because under the skin, mast cells are very abundantly present normally. And under the GAT mucosa and other mucosal lining, mast cells are produced, uh, present normally, physiologically, abundantly. So in such patient, mast cells inappropriately are stimulated under the skin and under the GAT mucosa. And what is there? They produce a lot of 